I work for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, the OECD, based in Paris. And I'm a telecom economist. Well, it's our group that's organizing the ministerial. The OECD's organized this. And um, we just thought that the internet economy has become something very important. And it's something that governments are really interested in. And we thought this would be a great occasion to bring in people from around the world, ministers from member governments, to talk about this, share experiences, um, and learn from each other. You know, I would say the, um, the most important part about this conference is raising awareness of these issues to policymakers, because um, a lot of times there are experiences that will happen in one country. For example, here in Korea, the internet is very advanced, and they run into some issues and some, some challenges and some opportunities that other countries haven't yet. So by getting us all together, we can learn from what's happened with the Koreans, we can avoid some of the the pitfalls, some of the difficulties they've had, and we can share the experiences. And I think that's probably the most important thing is the dialogue between countries. You know, my, I would say my biggest fear for the future of the internet is a lack of competition. And I mean that because we're at this period right now in the development of the internet where we're switching out copper cables to fiber optics. And so we're seeing this upgrade happening across the OECD. And there's a question about whether there can be competition, if you can get multiple fiber optic lines into each home, or if it's even economical or viable. Um, and if there's only going to be one fiber optic connection, one or maybe two fiber optic connections going into your house, there's a question of how are you going to be able to choose among a number of providers. I think one of the key issues is how are we going to guarantee competition that gives us innovative services and lower prices when we may only have one or two fiber options in the future? You know, I would say one of my biggest hopes is in the future I hope I'll be able to work from home and telecommute more. I, I live on the outskirts of Paris about an hour away from work, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes away. And I would really love to have a fast broadband connection where I could connect into work and possibly do research from home so I could avoid the commute, um, help out the environment at the same time, and then um, go, still go into work sometimes. And I, I look forward to the day when uh, the infrastructure will be able to support that with ups, uploads and downloads that are very fast, but also when society is ready for this, when uh, offices will be able to say, yeah, we do trust you, working from home, uh, we think you can be productive. Um, so I think the two need to go together and I think that will be an exciting day. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, we do a, a survey every, every year on advertised broadband speeds across all the 30 countries of the OECD. And what we found is uh, not all countries are equal when it comes to uh, these broadband speeds. Um, for example, in the United States, the average speed that we found was roughly 8 megabits a second over DSL, advertised download speeds, and about 8 megabits per second over cable as well. Well, um, to put that in perspective, now in, J in Japan, it's very common to have 100 megabits per second as your broadband service, and they even offer 1,000 megabits per second. So there are some countries that still are at, at DSL speeds of between um, probably 3 megabits per second and 24 megabits per second, and you have a whole other set of countries that are, that are moving up to fiber at 100 to 1,000 megabits per second. So I, I think there's going to be, uh, uh, I mean, those are some big differences in speeds. Well, the only way to, to achieve those types of speeds is to um, invest in fiber. So the problem with copper networks that we're using for cable and for DSL now is that they're limited in the amount of data that they can transmit. Whereas fiber technologies have a near limitless amount of capacity on them. So once the fiber is in the ground all the way to your home, you can keep bumping up the speeds over and over and over by adding more lasers on the line. And that's not possible with DSL. So if you really want to reach gigabit speeds, you're going to have to have fiber very, very, very close or all the way to your home. 
So it has to be all the way to the home or, or very, very close. That's a, it's a good question. In terms of internet governance, um, I think it's very important on a, in a general way that people have access to all types of information. I think it gets, um, it's, it's important that people will be able to visit websites of their choosing uh, and that certain applications and content aren't blocked as long as they're legal. And I think that's one of the big challenges. We're starting to see restrictions on the way we use the internet, things are being blocked uh, in, in certain countries. And I think we need to ensure that this remains an open network where uh, we can have innovation, new services, new applications come along, and also where people are free to express their ideas. You know, from my own view, uh, I think one of the big goals here is to raise awareness. I mean, typically, we, the, the title of this conference is The Future of the Internet Economy. But in some sense, we could almost get rid of the, the word internet, and this could become the future of the economy. Because we're seeing that the internet is now merging itself into all different parts of our lives, into shopping, into communicating, into our entertainment choices. And so, uh, I think what this is doing is it's, it's saying this is not just a techie issue anymore that this needs to come to the level of economic ministers that understand that this is really a vital part of the whole economy, not just video games. Exciting. <laughs>